Furry is uh, interesting. As you can probably tell by my online branding, I'm somewhat familiar with the furry community, although I want to make it abundantly clear not the side I'll be discussing today. Furries are brought together by an interesting cartoon anthropomorphic animals. This isn't always sexual, but there is a large sexual side. I personally argue that being attracted to anthropomorphic animals, that being animals with human characteristics, isn't zoophilia, but I do understand the opposing argument. What I do consider zoophilia, however, is being attracted to what the community calls feral artwork. I mean, a feral duck, for example, is literally just a drawing of a, a duck, so, I mean, being attracted to that is fairly telling. Anyway, while in the grand scheme of things, the furry community is very small, naturally every fandom has public figures. In the furry community, these are called poppy furs, a word I will not be using again because I think it's cringe. The most popular furry YouTubers have only around 300k subscribers, still a lot, especially compared to me, although compared to some of the other channels from other genres on this website, fairly small. That's where Kara the Wolf comes in, being a wide like for a YouTuber up until the allegations are discussed today. While his sub count is currently private, judging by the verification tick next to his name, he has at least 100,000 subscribers, being in the upper echelon of furry YouTubers in terms of sub count. Although, to be honest, if like Caro, I was losing thousands of subscribers almost monthly, I'd think about privating my sub count too. Kara the Wolf and the Zoo Crew, or the Zoo Sadists, are a group of allegedly disgusting human beings, being all but 100% proven to being behind some of the worst abuse of animals was known as a man. These people deserve to rot in prison for the rest of their lives, and that's putting it lightly. The story of Caro is a long one, taking roughly 4 hours give or take to fully get through, so allow me to give a fairly bridge version. If you want a better look, I can't recommend Seth McFly's Don't Mess With Dogs series enough. If you haven't seen it yet, you absolutely should. Even the abridged version is fairly graphic and not for the faint of heart, so if you chose to ignore it, I'll reiterate the warning from the beginning. If you aren't comfortable with the discussion of brutal animal abuse, please click off now. First, allow me to explain the difference between a zoophile and a zoo sadist. The zoophile only sexually abuses animals, whereas a zoo sadist physically abuses animals for sexual pleasure. While zoo sadism is admittedly worse, that's not to say zoophilia is good or justifiable in any way, shape, or form. Both are absolutely despicable, and I really hope I don't have to explain why. If you do want to try and justify either, please click off now. I don't want people like you anywhere near me or my videos. Caro and the zoo crew would be classified as zoo sadists, allegedly, of course. As, as you will see, they talked about raping animals, both dead and alive, as well as inflicting pain upon them for their own pleasure. Once again, if you do want to say this out, I don't blame you. Now, granted, while I said allegedly, that's not due to the lack of evidence. When dealing with allegations of this nature, the evidence is usually somewhat shaky, but the same can't be said for the Caro allegations. In 2018, a Twitter user by the name Pseudonym posted telegram screenshots on Twitter of Caro the Wolf and some friends engaging in some of the most degenerate conversation ever. The chat logs or who sadism leaks as they're commonly referred to have content I wouldn't force my worst enemy to watch, as along with the abhorrent conversation I'll get into soon, Caro and his friends distributed bestiality porn, sometimes self-made. At this point, Caro was a widely respected furry YouTuber, not just by furries, but normal people too. Too, as he had done an interview with Shane Dawson months before. <laughs> yeah, Shane Dawson. Funny how that worked out. Uh, I like to dab a lot. Naturally, someone with a platform like Kara would be interested in keeping it, so it was imperative he dispel these allegations, true or not. While the chat logs were starting a conversation online, on September 16th, the same day the leaks dropped, Kara had decided to tweet this. I go to get back in and now it's gone. What the fuck? My account is gone. What? Why? Showing Telegram's Korean account page. Kara had also tweeted a picture showing his account had been accessed by someone in Iran. Now, although inhaling that much glue is dangerous, I'd like you to imagine what was going through Kara's mind at that point in time. Screenshots of what you thought were private conversations about doing at best disgusting and at worst severely illegal things had just been to the public. If you don't think of a good alibi, your career and image will forever be smeared. Now, on one hand, he was probably panicking, and understandably so, but on the other, he's allegedly a dog raper, so I actually I won't go easy on him. Why the fuck would you assume Iranian super hackers breaching your Telegram account to paint you as an animal abuser was a good story? I mean, even John Swan's artistic 12 year old manager excuse was more believable. For a story to make sense, the hackers would have had to have access to his account for about two years, conveniently unnoticed until he would need proof he wasn't on his account. Not only that, but this absolute dumb fuck left very important key to unlocking the mystery of who actually accessed his account from an Iranian IP. If you check the top of Kara's screenshot, you may notice this small icon. This icon only shows up when you're using a VPN. At this point, you've probably seen enough YouTube ad reads to know what a VPN is, one of the main features of which being changing your IP address to another location. 
This can be used to watch Netflix in a different country, hide your IP address from people who will threaten you with leaking it, and oh, faking your account being accessed from Iran. Even giving Kira the benefit of the doubt here, which is that he was just using a VPN to encrypt his data, what be the point of Iranian hackers hacking some random furry YouTuber's Telegram account and sending disgusting messages for about two years straight without getting bored just to frame him? If you have a good reason, I'd love to hear it, because as you can probably tell by how fucking ridiculous that sounds, I can't think of one. These channel leaks contain videos, but it's important to mention most of the videos are one of Kira. There was, however, a man who was mistaken to be Kira in them, a fact Kira defenders would use to vindicate Kara completely, but as I'll explain, there's a lot more evidence than just that. But I was told about one instance where a face was shown, and it was the person who was allegedly Caro, and it was not their face. I didn't see the video. I don't even know if you can still access it anymore. Those videos, if that is true that there's no faces shown other than that one, then you cannot conclusively say, well, that was Kiro. According to the Zeusaitis evidence page on Wikifire, a website used to document important figures and events in the furry fandom, the videos contained, among other things, someone penetrating an alive tied-up dog, someone penetrating the corpse of a deer, and someone penetrating a tied-up dog with the wide end of a baseball bat until it started spasming. While writing and recording that part, I, I just spent ages wondering how the fuck someone can be so mentally fucked to convince himself that that's okay. Now, it's worth knowing that Caro obviously wasn't the only person in the conversations, I mean, he wasn't talking to himself. While the other people in the Zoosadism League dubbed the Zoo Crew were a group of furries who'd regularly interact on Telegram. Of the Zoo Crew, the most important ones named, went by Snake Thing, Woof, Elite Knight, Glowfox, Tain, Cepheus Rivendare, Equinus, Timwin, Tekita, Techno Husky, Sanji, Blonde Dog, Ember, Kintari, and L1 Shuppy Paws. I won't be discussing them in depth due to this being a video about Caro, but they are important to know. The charges against the people on that list are disturbing, and most worse than Caro's, but due to him being the most famous, people focused in on him. Snake Thing was reportedly the leader of the whole operation, and in the Telegram chat, he would regularly convince the other members to abuse both children and animals. Thankfully, Snake Thing is currently in prison, pleading guilty to six charges of encouraging child sexual abuse in the first degree, and four charges of encouraging child sexual abuse in the second degree. Notice how I didn't mention animal sexual abuse, that being due to the alarmingly short statute of limitations on animal abuse which will be important later. However, that isn't to downplay the harm he caused to children, and while I think a sentence of 25 years in prison he is facing is way too short, at least for the time being, he is behind bars. While a lot of other people in the leagues pled guilty, Caro didn't, still saying his innocent to this day. Again, to my knowledge, Caro is the only one with a large internet following, so it makes sense why I'd want to keep his reputation as clean as possible. If he tries to come back under a different name, people will find out. Now, I'm about five pages into the script, and I still haven't given all too much evidence to implicate Kara the Wolf. I mean, firstly, how do we even know it was him and not just a fake? Surely you can't prove the account saying the stuff was actually Kara. Well, that's not exactly true. Going back to the hacking excuse one Kara used frequently in the early days despite being absolutely fucking retarded, the most important evidence that disproves this lies in the timestamps. As mentioned before, for these messages to be from a hacked account, the hackers would have had to have access to Kara's account for two whole years unnoticed. This is because on Telegram, timestamps can't be edited. If a message is edited, however, the timestamp actually updates. The server updates the timestamps using the server's clock not, I repeat, not the client device time you're using. Not only that, but Telegram is extremely fucking difficult to hack. They couldn't possibly have been faked. Since Telegram was created by an enemy of Russian President Vladimir Putin's, it is one of the most targeted platforms in the world. Neither China, Russia, or Iran have been able to modify Telegram's messages on the server itself. What he's saying is, to hack Telegram, you'd have to be better than the Russian government, the Chinese government, and even the Iranian government. Now, obviously, just because something is extremely difficult doesn't mean it's impossible, but let's be real, I can't imagine someone with more skill than the best of the Chinese, Russians, and Iranians using that skill to frame a random fucking neckbeard. So, hacking is basically out of the question, but how do we know the leaks were actually him? They were just screenshots, right? Again, not exactly. Firstly, the messages were forwarded and downloaded, not screenshot. Obviously, there are screenshots, but the original messages leaked were downloaded and forwarded to other Telegram chats. 
Something that also proves that with Shadow of the Tao he was at least in the Zusadam chats is his user ID. On Telegram you have a set user ID. Even if you change your username using a bot you can find that ID and surprise surprise the ID of the Kara account from the chat matches up perfectly with Kara the Wolf's official Telegram account. So people who had known conversations with Kiro in the past forwarded messages from their old conversations that they knew were with the real Kiro to user info bot and got the ID. Then they took messages for, that were alleged to be Kiro from the chat, from the Kiro in the chat, and also forwarded them to user info bot and it gave back an ID. And the IDs between the account that was Kiro's in the chat that was alleged to be Kiro and the accounts that people know were actually Kiro, they matched. It's the same ID. If somehow that isn't enough evidence for you, here are some of the private messages discussing some things he would later go on and say and do publicly. Kiro told Snake Thing he was making a video for YouTube, which Kiro uploaded that same video the very next day that matched what he described in this chat. One other thing that was found while looking through his social media was that he was into Vore, which is a paraphilia involved the fetishization of eating someone or being eaten. Also that Kiro had publicly said that he was from Pittsburgh and that the alleged Telegram Kiro was also from Pittsburgh. But it goes deeper. Telegram Kiro and Twitter Kiro got their fursuits around the same time. Telegram Kiro also strangely aligned with Kiro's visit to Anthrocon, something YouTube Kiro had live streamed. These are all things aligning between 2016 and 2018. Oh, another similarity? Telegram Kiro also shared YouTuber Kiro's political views on animals and environment that he shared on both Twitter and his fur affinity. And Telegram Kiro also got interviewed by Shane Dawson at the same date too. If all of that evidence lining up doesn't convince you, you're either lying or extremely stupid. You get to choose which one. With his cover now blown, he can't hide behind around your super hackers much longer. Changing his story halfway through should already be enough to make you suspicious, but it's how we change his story and how much that's interesting. So I confronted Kiro about this and basically told him, look, I know that these logs are real. If you keep denying that, people are eventually going to find out the truth and this entire thing is going to start all over. And then Kiro agreed with me and told me that yes, the logs are his. He had those conversations, and he does have an interest in some aspects of Zophilia. He couldn't continue with the excuse he was hacked for much longer, so eventually, he snapped. A fairly, let's just say, uh, controversial for a YouTube by name Kofrix uploaded a video entitled The Truth About Caro, a video Caro retweeted. In this video, Kofrix shared that Caro had told him the locks were in fact real, although he hadn't actually raped any animals, he only had an interest in feral art. Caro retweeting the video would obviously be seen as an endorsement and justifiably so. At this point, to the dismay of his supporters and rejoice of his detractors, Caro had officially stated he was in fact the person in the chat logs. Of course, only to backtrack in an now delete interview with one of his biggest defenders. Are the chat logs real or are the chat logs fake? Okay, so the chat logs are fake. At this point, he's changed his story from I was hacked to the chats are real back to the chats are fake. It goes without saying, but if he wasn't lying, his story wouldn't change so drastically. Going back to the Kofrix interview, he brings up the theory that Caro talking about raping animals was just locker room talk. Kofrix says that no, Caro didn't abuse any animals, instead he was just fantasizing his conversations with Snake Thing. Similarly, how two teenage boys lie about having sex to impress their friends. What I think we have here is a lot of talk from Kiro about fantasies he has. He talks about things he's done and things he wants to do, but what we don't have is any evidence that he actually did these things. I think this is a very similar situation to a kind of locker room chatter. Basically, when someone sees the object of their sexual fantasy and starts talking about all the degenerate things they would do to that person, or animal in this case, but they never actually do. This theory is flawed. While Kara defenders use the fact that people mistook one of the rapists in the leaked video as Kara to vindicate him of all allegations, the evidence that Kara has committed bestiality is insurmountable. I'm gonna put this next part as bluntly as possible. Coda was Kara's duck. Coda was raped to the point of kidney failure. Allegedly, of course. In the conversations of Snake Thing, Kara shows remorse for abusing his duck now that he was dying. Personally, I can't imagine continuing to lie about having sex with a dying dog who Kara seemingly cares for. Not enough to not abuse him, obviously, but care about in the sense that after he died, he wouldn't have something to abuse for his own pleasure anymore. As well as that, Kara also apparently shared pictures of Coda's genitals. 
I personally haven't seen the pictures, but people who have say that the background matches footage of Kara's Next. house. Kiro's alleged beast form account was found on the 8th of February, if it couldn't be any more obvious that he was a sick pup. These were posts by someone who was most likely Kiro, as far back as 2012. I will call this Kiro because it is most likely him, as the pictures of the dog from the forums line up with his dog, as well as the location lines up and the interests of the poster lines up with Kiro's interests. He even posted puppy photos of Koda, asking how long he had to wait for the dog to be old enough to f him. These same photos of the same dog can be found on Kiro's fur affinity account, posted months and even a year after the Dogman 2 shared them on Beast Forum. Yeah, Beast Forum is exactly what you think it is. A forum full of people do discuss raping ducks. While it's not 100% confirmed, Kiro and the Dogman 2 are the same person, posting the exact same picture of the exact same dog is an interesting coincidence, especially seeing as though the pictures were posted on Beast Forum first, which means if Kiro took them off there, he would have at least have had to go on the website, so I don't know. If this is Kero, which I would be genuinely surprised if it isn't, that means Kero didn't only have an account on Bestiality Forum, but he used that account to admit his intent to rape dogs. Once again, it isn't confirmed they're the same person, but if it somehow turns out they aren't, I will be incredibly surprised. But surely Kero didn't actually do anything to his dog. Surely it was just luck room talk. No. If the Dogman 2 is Kero, which most people are 99% sure of, then Kero the Wolf has filmed and distributed a video of him fucking his dog. The camera person in the evidence video is never fully visible, however, we do see some of their clothing. The first is a pair of black tennis shoes with black and silver arch patterns on the sides. The second article of clothing is a sweater with long black cuffs and an asymmetrical striping pattern on the left and right sleeves. Kiro wore the same shoes and sweater to the January 17th, 2015 Pennsylvania Furries Cosmic Fur Bowl event. Here's a breakdown of the shoes. The white stuff on the shoes in the video is likely snow, because in the video you can see the camera person's breath which meant it must have been filmed on a cold day. And here's a breakdown of the sweater. So we have video of a dog identical to Kiro's dog being molested by someone in clothing Kiro owns. The statute of limitations for bestiality in New York is only two years. For Kiro to be charged with bestiality in 2018, there would need to be proof of him molesting a dog within 2016 to 2018. The video of Kiro and Koda was filmed in 2014, falling just outside the statute of limitations. Instead, I ended up finding the exact second he hit the record button. Giving a blowjob to my dog, posted on November 29th, 2014, by the Dogman 2. Here's the video. Sorry it took so long. Attached file, movie underscore number 27 underscore 20141129 underscore 002340.wmv. The exact same file name from the 8chan upload. Kiro's Beast Forum account is the source of the video sent to the New York police. The file format is different, but it's easy enough to convert a WMV file to an MP4 file if you have basic video editing software. This explains what the jumble of numbers in the file name are. They're the date and time the recording started. November 29th, 2014. 23 minutes and 40 seconds past midnight. A date two years too old for the New York police to do anything to charge Kiro with either bestiality or distribution of this video. Of course a judge wouldn't sign off on a warrant for a search or an arrest based off this evidence. They legally couldn't. Kiro could have shown his full face, stated his name, and confessed to what he was doing, and the police couldn't do a damn thing. Keep all of that in mind as we move on to the next part of the video. As I've stated before, I skimmed over a lot of information for the sake of brevity. Once again, I implore you to watch Cecil McFly series. Hi guys. A lot has happened in the past two years. Kara was silent for about two years. That was until the 12th of March 2021. 
two months ago at the time of writing. This sent shockwaves through the internet. Due to the overwhelming evidence as well as him literally admitting to it, a large portion of the internet despise him and rightfully so. In my side, Carol explains how he's clearly not guilty because otherwise he'd be in prison. Someone called the police, accused me of having illicit material on my computer, and the warrant was to check for distribution and storage of it, which is a felony. If this would have been true, I would not be here talking to you today. I would be in jail. But something about this video is off. The likes and dislikes are disabled and the comments are automatically sorted by new. Even sorting manually by top, the comments are definitely negative, but you'd think there'd be more. While well, in attempt to minimize the criticism, Caro and the moderators of his channel have been deleting a lot of negative comments. Now, I consider deleting critical comments a massive pussy move. It'd be different if the comments were getting automatically deleted like YouTube does from time to time, but instead of just quietly delaying your comment, Caro's mods will reply to you and leave an extremely long comment for you to not read. If you leave a negative comment on Kiro's videos, a YouTube account once went by Voice of Truth, now Truth King dash Kiro is not guilty, will go to your YouTube channel and leave a sh comment defending Kiro. I mean, granted, you can't really expect too much mental competence from a guy who goes around publicly branding himself as truthing Kiro is innocent. The only quote-unquote evidence that Kiro uses to prove his innocence is the fact he's not been arrested, which I've already explained with the Statue of Limitation. Now, while Kiro gives some god-fucking-awful excuses, sometimes he just doesn't even bother. When he brings up the Statue of Limitations, he doesn't attempt to give a counter, instead showing a video from his friends who also doesn't attempt to give a counter. A lot of people say that I got away with it because of legal loopholes, such as denying a search or statute of limitations. However, these people do not know the law. In fact, one of my friends made a video about one of these topics. Now folks, we have a saying in this country, innocent until proven guilty, and since the investigation has been dropped, that means the police were not capable of creating enough of a case against Kiro to prove his guilt. So what does that mean? It means that half the battle is over and won in Kiro's favor. He has not been proven guilty, therefore, by US law, he is, by process of elimination, innocent. Yes, that is legitimately where the clip ends. He doesn't try and disprove the Statue of Limitations at all. Kiro brings it up and expects you to ignore it, essentially. All he says is these people do not know the law, but Kiro... Do you? A large problem with dropping allegations publicly on platforms like Twitter instead of going to the police immediately means everyone's alerted, especially the person who's been accused. Yeah, it gives people like me more consent, but it also gives the person time in advance to prepare. Caro says this to prove his innocence. The police were able to attain a search warrant, which blew my mind. There's honestly nothing there to justify a search warrant. But how much would you like to bet that as soon as Kara found out he's been exposed, which was almost instantly due to being tagged in the thread, he completely scrubbed his hard drives? Personally, I'd bet a lot. Also, I mean, even if you weren't arrested, Caro, having the police investigate you for two years isn't exactly a good look. One thing that really pissed me off about this video, though, is the description. If you've spent hours watching hate videos about me, you owe me the 15 minutes it takes to watch this video. Yeah, no, fuck you. You've been credibly accused of abusing animals. You deserve fuck all. Caro decides to say that he had, in fact, spoken to Snake Thing, but they only spoke about feral art. Now, you already know my opinion on feral art, so in my opinion, when he says none of that nasty shit, I'm already hesitant. Well, it is true I have talked to Snake Thing before. I didn't know he was a monster he turned out to be. We were not friends, just some guy I met in some furry group. And we talked about feral cartoons. The logs of me are not real. There was none of that nasty shit in there, just a normal conversation between two people who like feral characters. He doesn't confirm whether the chat logs are real or fake, but I mean, we already have proof they're real, so let's move on, shall we? He then brings up the fact that Zunim, the person who tweeted the thread originally, is an admitted zoophile. Kara uses this to completely discredit them, asking what's the motive. Well, you see, most zoophiles are extremely deluded. I mean, to want to rape animals, you have to be some sort of mentally efficient, but I digress. From my understanding, a lot of zoophiles attempt to rationalize fucking animals by saying, no, in fact, they're consenting just non-verbally. Ignoring the fact this is an extremely fucking retarded way of thinking, zoophiles have tricked themselves into thinking they actually care for animals, and so when they see animals being physically abused instead of, you know, just sexually, they would be interested in stopping it. Once again, I'm not trying to defend zoophiles, I think pseudonym should be arrested as well as Caro because they're both fucking disgusting and dangerous to society. The difference is, Caro and his friends, being suicidists, have done more harm to animals. There's your move. Caro boils down what happened to him as cancel culture, but... 
That's not what it is. Cancel culture is when people try to tear someone off that platform for no good reason. Cancel culture is people forcing someone to apologize for associating with someone they disliked four years ago, not attempting to just platform an all but proven zoo sadist. Cancel culture is associated with things that aren't actually that bad, so it makes sense why Kara would try to build this narrative, and build he does with the next video he uploads being called the furry fandom versus cancel culture. Again, likes off, comments sorted by new. Kara starts the video off by saying the reason he was kicked from the furry fandom is so they can protect their image. Ignoring the facts before this, furries were already the internet's punching bag, do you really think any community is going to want one of their largest figures being a fucking rapist? I'm tired of everyone stepping on each other just because they want to be a little bit more popular. If all we do is hate, then we're just going to end up with more hate. Cancel culture has no place in our fandom. I really want to focus in on this. Kara keeps on trying to build the narrative that people only dislike him because it's a popular thing to do, because apparently Kara is the only accused predator who people dislike. Even in situations where there is so little evidence to suggest someone is a predator, there will be people who hate them and still think they're guilty. The only difference is, once again, Kara has mountains of evidence against him. I know I keep saying that, but Kara's acting as if there is literally no proof. Even my fairly surface level explanation of this evidence shows that there's at least enough proof for the police to search this fucker, something he pretended to be confused at. The police were able to attain a search warrant, which blew my mind. Don't let him trick you, Kara is fully aware what he did was fucked up and he's lying through his teeth. Either that or he somehow deluded himself into thinking he hasn't done anything wrong. Kara's nuclear take in this video is that people are only not defending him because they're scared of the backlash. I, I'm not fucking kidding, he quite literally says that. Because everyone is being afraid of being cancelled that they'll never speak up for fear of the backlash. That's how cancel culture is dominating our fandom. It makes everyone feel useless and unable to talk about what they really feel. So I'll be the first to talk about this. Let me make this clear. People are against you because you're a bad person, Kara. Again, allegedly, but let's be real, you're definitely guilty. I'm being 100% truthful when I say I bet my life on the allegations being real. There's just so much fucking evidence that it's quite literally impossible for you to be innocent. You're not immediately innocent because you raped an animal and only got found out four years later. Too late for the police to do anything. Kara pivots by saying that the NSFW side of the furry fandom isn't bad. I'd agree, but the problem is when you bring actual animals into it. At first I agreed with him when he said instead of going to Twitter with allegations you should just go to the police, but then, you know, he fucks it up once again by blaming cancel culture. I'm not just going to keep repeating myself like Kara is, but getting mad at over a creator being edgy five years ago is different to people getting mad because a creator fucked a dog. Then he basically says Twitter bad because everyone can find out about something after it's put out there. Jeez, uh, I wonder why he has that tech. The last video of the trilogy may discussing his quote-unquote cancellation is called Moving Forward. It's also the shortest of the three, and thank god because I don't think I can sit through much more of his extremely fucking annoying voice. Being the shortest, it also has the least substance. He decides to attack two of the largest furry YouTubers, Majira Strawberry and Beta Ray Delota, for condemning him. He says by calling him out, all they did was give him views, which is all he wanted, because after all, any publicity is good publicity. On one hand, he clearly wants attention, but on the other, if no one talks about what he's done, he'll fully be able to come back. I don't blame Majira and Beta for condemning him in the slightest, because hopefully he now knows he isn't welcome. Not just in the furry fandom, but hopefully anywhere. Now, to my fans, I know this is sad news for you to hear, and in a perfect world, I would come back and stay, but this isn't truly what makes me happy anymore. Good. Leave. The video ends with Kara putting on a fursuit hat, thanking his fans, saying goodbye, but unfortunately saying he's not going for good. He gives a shitty emotional speech and ends with a fate of black. Overall, I give the trilogy a 0 out of 10. Maybe if he wasn't a rapist, I'd be a little bit more forgiving. With that, Kara uploaded two more videos. They are particularly relevant as they were made as Patreon exclusives, he's just re uploading them. They're just simple, albeit unfunny skits, nothing too out of the ordinary. Usually that'd be where the video ends, save a few things I want to say for the actual end. Since he's come back, Kara's been engaging in some less than respectful behaviour. On the 1st of May, a YouTube by the name Lazy Bedhead tweeted the following. At Team YouTube, at YouTube, at YouTube Creators, recently a YouTuber, Kara the Wolf, has falsely copyright claimed fair use content on my channel. 
In an email conversation we exchanged, she attempted to use DMCA law in order to extort me into removing fair use content. Attached is a Google document featuring the entire transcript of their email exchange, which I'll discuss in a minute. She continues the thread with, he made several false claims, including claiming that YouTube representatives reviewed the content and found it to be a violation of DMCA. This is blatant extortion and violation of your copyright system. Please take action against his creator immediately in order to prevent further abuse as he is using these tactics against several creators. This isn't about copyright, I'm glad you gave me permission to post this because now everyone knows how you've done me dirty. With a screenshot highlighting the part of the exchange where Kara says if you were told a non-biased account what happened, I possibly would not have filed the strike against the infringing content. Now I'm not going to read the entire exchange, primarily due to the fact it's just under double the word count of this script, however I'll link the document in the description and give you the rundown. Before I do though, I feel the need to mention that Lazy Bedhead's video was completely fair use, and you can still watch it due to the Book Fly archiving on her channel. Also, so is this video. The reason I've been addressing Kara personally throughout this video is because there's a very good chance he's watching, so if you are Kara, this video is completely fair use. I'm using clips from your videos to criticise you, exactly what Lazy Bedhead did. While unfortunately he might not face any consequences, falsely striking a video is in fact illegal. In this exchange, Kara attempts to meet a middle ground. Kara will graciously remove the full strike issued as long as Lazy Bad Head takes the video down and doesn't re-upload it. How kind of Kara, it's not like the strike shouldn't even be there in the fucking first place. Despite staying, even though you made a huge number of errors in your reporting of the facts of my case, that's not why I issued the strike, which he, uh, didn't by the way. Kara sort of contradicts himself by saying this hardly a few paragraphs later. If you were told a non-biased account of what happens, I possibly would not file the strike against the infringing content. At this point, if you can tell before, Kara is attempting to minimize the damage to his reputation by quietly taking down videos from smaller creators. He knows he won't be able to take Cecil's videos down without a lot of backlash, but maybe he'd be able to sleep striking an only 13k sub channel under the rug. Unfortunately for Caro, as you can tell by the fact not only I, but much bigger creators talking about this, it didn't exactly go to plan for him. He attempts to guilt trip her by saying he's been stalked and harassed as well as one of his friends being swatted for associating with him. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't condone swatting an innocent person and I only sort of have a problem with harassing zoo files. The point of the video wasn't to send harassment to Caro though, the exact same as with this video. The point of the video was to be a comedic retrospective of the Kara situation. Again, there was nothing factually incorrect in that video. He then tries to be nice to Lazy, saying he actually likes our humour and editing. The only problem is that she stole his content, which again is untrue. He has a problem with her paying him as a societal threat, but to be honest, I don't exactly disagree. With the evidence presented, a rational person would naturally come to that conclusion. Kara also tries to justify it again by saying, you stole my content and this was evaluated by YouTube employees and determined to be a valid application of the law. Which just isn't how it works. No, 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 no. This is a common thing that a lot of people will say in their defense when they abuse the copyright system on YouTube. They claim that YouTube actually looks into these strikes and then they make a determination of yes this is abuse of your content we'll take it down or no it's not youtube cannot legally do that now to some extent youtube takes a little bit of risk and they will take a look at uh the video on a very narrow basis very narrow basis essentially what they say is is the content being used in the video content from this individual if the answer is yes they take the video down. If the answer is no, they may, and I say may because this very rarely happens, they may send that individual an email and say, we think this is fair use, we're not going to strike it down. Oh yeah, by the way, using that tips to video was fair use, something he'd agree with me on. But unfortunately, Caro didn't stop there. He instead of copyright striked another video, this time a video by Archive the Wolf. Once again, Cecil McFly was kind enough to archive and re-upload it. The video entitled Asking Kara Basic Questions contains just that. Kara actually managed to successfully DMCA this video within 4 hours of it being uploaded, which has to be one of the most pathetic things I've ever heard. If you're scared of a video like this, how the fuck do you expect people to believe you're innocent? Funnily enough, the video starts by basically confirming my suspicions that after getting word he was exposed, Kero completely scrubbed his hard drives. I wonder why he wouldn't want that out there. It's clear to see that Kero has no problem with silence and criticism, and that's something I really can't see an innocent person doing. That, along with the mountains of evidence and god-awful response videos, confirm it to me. To my knowledge, those are the early videos he struck, but I would suggest downloading this video just in case Kero decides he doesn't like it. 
Based on the evidence I've seen throughout researching and scripting this video, Kara is very clearly guilty, and while unfortunately it's likely he won't go to prison, hopefully the furry fandom, and more importantly, the end at large, won't let him return. Usually I'm vehemently against platforming, but I can't see a reason someone who physically and sexually abuses animals deserves a platform in the first place. Garrow's return was one hardly anyone wanted, but looking in the comments that aren't deleted, he's unfortunately managed to convince some people that he did nothing wrong. This shows that no matter how hard you try, you can't keep someone off the internet, whether you're trying to because of an edgy joke they made a couple years ago, or because of an actual legitimate reason like with Caro. This really shows you should just go to the police, not Twitter. Yeah, letting people know the true colours of someone with a possession of power is good and all, but if the accuser had gone straight to the police, Caro might be behind bars where he belongs. It also makes people more willing to make fake stories up, and therefore legitimate ones get discredited more often. As I've said before, I don't doubt for a second that Kara is guilty, through the copious amounts of research I've done for this video, and bear in mind the script has been in the work since April, I'm 100% certain with my conclusion. If after watching this entire video, you still think Kara is innocent, then to be honest, I don't know what to tell you. I think I've provided more than enough evidence to prove he's guilty of at least some things. I mean, at the very least, he's guilty of false flagging, we know that for certain. And Kara, if you're watching this, I feel the need to reiterate, I don't condone any harassment towards you, these are just allegations and this video falls under fair use. Let me know if I've got anything. I genuinely mean that by the way, there's a reason the harassment disclaimer is my intro for all of my videos. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, which I'm hoping you have since I put a lot of work into it, as I said, since April, I'd really appreciate if you would consider subscribing if you aren't already. Also, my Twitter recently got suspended, so feel free to follow the new one, at Conservative. Uh, I'm not conservative, by the way. If you're following the Xanahal situation I was in about a week ago at the time of recording, you'll probably get the joke. If not, feel free to watch my past two videos. If you want to criticise me on this video, feel free to leave it in my comments or my Discord server. As long as you aren't just telling me to kill myself, I'd be happy to hear it. Or, if you do just want to tell me to kill myself, do it in the comments, it gives me more engagement. As always, thank you for making it to the end of the video. That being said, I'll see you next time.